Yogis. Today is Sananda Sarvangasana Day, which is your supported shoulder stand. And a lot of my yogis inquired and asked if I could just do a video about this because sometimes the setup can be a little bit confusing. Um, in Iyengar Yoga, we use proper setup under the shoulders to support the neck and the shoulders well. Um, caution, if you are menstruating, you do not do this pose. And if you have neck problems or shoulder problems, high blood pressure, please consult your teacher before you attempt these things. For those of you that are pretty much used to the pose, today we fine tune the pose. I'm going to show the classical setup with the wall, setup with the chair, and all the measurements uh, and maybe all the gray areas that you would like to clear. And then I will also show an alternative pose for if there's a reason that you cannot do the Salamba Sarvangasana. Now, Salamba means supported. Sarvangasana means all the limbs or the entire body. It is a very nurturing pose because it really works on the entire body. It's so good for your thyroid, your parathyroid. It's very good for the digestive system. It brings calmness. It's good for circulation. Um, if you think of your head stance, Shishasana, Salamba Shishasana, as being the father of all poses or the king, then Salamba Sarvangasana is the queen. And it really has the energy of the, the woman. It is nurturing. So we're going to start. And the first one that we will do is the classical setup measuring from the wall. Now you're going to see the props that we need and I'm also going to show alternatives for in case you're in lockdown and you don't have all these props. So we start, I like to work on two mats, it's not a must. So you're going to start with your feet into the wall and we're going to measure. So let me show you. So whether it's your stack of homes or your blankets, you will understand soon where we're going. My feet are into the wall. And I put the foam or uh, anything that I can measure with just behind my buttocks. And that will be my first measure. So I keep it there. And then the second set of foams, and I'm showing this setup because many of you have the foams, you place on the inside towards the wall. This is where it often goes wrong. Now, if you want to think what is the measurement from that you need here from the wall, it is the inner leg measurement. So if I sit with my feet against the wall, my inner leg is where the first part of any prop will go. So this is an inner leg measurement. If your hamstrings are very tight, you will learn to cheat a little bit and bring the set up a little bit closer to the wall, but you will understand that soon. So I take my mat and I flip it over. And then, Today I'm going to show with two blankets, sometimes you might need more and your teacher will alert you if you need more and you will know because you come to class. So the first blanket is over and I have a neat rounded edge here, I'll actually make it even neater for you to see and this part here is for my head. The second blanket with its double folded area with the roundedness here is going to be on the edge. Make sure that this is a smooth edge because your neck feels everything once you're in the pose and we really build up height for the neck. If you've got a very long neck, you put another bit of support. And then I bring my sticky mat over so that there's a little bit still left for blanket which is where my neck will be supported and the sticky mat is there to support my elbow so that it doesn't slip. Then you place, some people place a block. Today I'm going to show with the bolster. I have my bolster here as a landing strip or a launching pad. Now some of you have got straps and it's very good to support the elbows in this position. If you don't have, it's not the end of the world. Now, Observe how I place myself. So an important first little instruction is to tuck your t-shirt. 
you measure your strap if you're using a strap from the outer edge of the shoulder to the other outer edge. And today I'm showing. So at any point when you're practicing at home, you just press the pause button on the video, you get your setup right and you, you con continue from there. Now when I lie down, the important thing is that your shoulders must be on this little platform and your head must be on the floor. So I use my thumb length to make sure that I'm right. So let me show. I lie down my, from my thumb to where it joins with the hand, that distance I'm away from, my shoulders is away from the edge. So there's a little gap there. My head is free on the floor. Now this is where you've got your launching pad to help you and you can see I've got my strap in my hand. I roll over into the wall and this is why I said if your hamstrings are tight you come a little bit closer with the setup to the wall. I roll on top of my shoulders, you can grip the edges of your mat. There's many actions you can do here, you can interlock your fingers, really make sure that you're on the top of the shoulders. I put the strap over my upper arms, place the hands on the back, and up you go, into your shoulder stand. Now you can stay here for at least five minutes, and when you feel ready, you're going to come to Halasana, which can be here, and it can also be all the way to the floor. Now, just while you're in shoulder stand, you try to take your hands lower and lower and lower to the floor, so that the, the chest come more and more to the chin. You take your abdomen in, tailbone in, front thighs in, and you lengthen your inner legs. And you don't point your toes, you flex them first and then slightly lifting the ball mounts to the ceiling. Okay, so you can stay as long as you need. Remember, this is the moment where all those wonderful things happen in the thyroid, the parathyroid. Watch how I roll out. I try to not disturb my head as much as possible to keep it quiet and calm. You can stay here for a moment, you can move back until your shoulders are off and you can just rest here for as long as you need. Rolling to the right side to come up. Now I just want to show here, you can use the same setup but if you don't have a wall you use a chair. So observe. So you know exactly how I've done the setup. And it's quite good to do it with a chair because it's also another way to get your halasana. And as you know, in the class or maybe at home, you've got a little bench and you can put your upper thighs over a bench and stay there forever in halasana after the, uh, the shoulder stand, which is very good for your lower back. So just observe for a moment how we do it with the chair. Once again, I measure thumb length distance away from this edge of the platform. I roll over into my halasana. Tippy toes on the chair now. I don't have a wall. And I'm on the tops of my shoulders. Support. And up and down. To come down, you can stay in your Sarvangasana, in your Halasana, the power position, as long as your body needs. And once again, quiet head and release. And it's a wonderful feeling this moment of moving over until the shoulders are on the floor. A little back bend opener here. And then over we go. So you've seen the setup now, stop the video, play, make sure, get your confidence here. Now I'm going to show the shoulder stand, Salamba Savangasana, using your chair. Some of you have got these nice Iyengar chairs, you might have a chair at home that you can work with. So observe. So first 
first a little moment of destruction. Let me quickly interrupt myself here. If by any chance, as I said, you are in lockdown and you don't have all these things that looks like these fancy props, you can literally take a stack of blankets as many as you think your back your your neck will need you take as many pillows as you need at home as you've got at home if you don't have a yoga mat this is what it will look like and you can go into the same pose with the wall without the wall depending on your own ability and there we go so it's absolutely not necessary to have this big setup every time. Don't let props or the absence of props stop you from the practice of your yoga. So now chair shoulder stand, chair samangasana. So I like to have a sticky mat on my chair because when I slide back, I, don't, I like that little bit of resistance so I'm not slipping off my chair. This is something you also decide on through your own experience. If you feel unsure, make sure somebody is close by to hold your chair for you. Just to get into the pose. And then a little bit of softness for my lower back. And then you take your blankets or pillows and you can see how I do it here. I bring it to touch my chair leg. If you are taller or you might have a very long neck, you might want to put this a little bit further uh, or away from the leg of the chair, but that is all personal experience. To protect the hair so that they don't pull when you come out and just also just to have softness under the head I put a blanket and observe now so I am sitting side saddle first so it gets very confusing here many of you start with the feet through no it's not going to work side saddle far enough away from the wall so that you're not blocked by the wall and you just bring your legs over. You bring your butt up deep in, well in and then I hold my back legs of my chair. I go over until I feel, yes, my shoulders are going to be well supported. Once again, my shoulders are on the platform and my head is on the floor. I grip the back legs. I put my feet on the backrest and I wiggle until I feel that my lower back is happy there. And then you spread your legs over the backrest. And from here you might be close enough so that you have your feet resting into the wall. And then be on the top of that shoulders. Bring your legs up, stretch. A moment of Viparita Karani. You can do all your wonderful um, alternatives here, your variations. You can rest your feet and Badakonasana on the back rest. And as I said, if you have a bench, you can place it under the thighs to rest. Or you can go into your full Mandasana here, come back. Or the toes on the seat of the chair, just like we did in the full pose. And then coming out quietly, move away from the chair, try to not get the habit of pushing the chair away from you. And then for a moment, you can stay here and it's a very blissful moment. Take a few deeper breaths and remember, you press pause buttons or you observe this video, you choose, you practice your setup and then you Switch this video off and you stay in your pose for as long as you need. Now sometimes there's reasons for people not to be on the shoulder stand. 
And a nice alternative here is the four foam setup. Let me show you. So this can be a set of books. Uh, any support that really firmly support the back. So let me show you. So I prefer to have a blanket over the backrest because you need to be here for a while and we want to support the ankles. You don't need anything else except your four foams or your stack of books. And you are going to lie with the legs over the chair, but I'll first over the backrest or the seat. And then one by one you insert your foam. So don't let your t-shirt get trapped here. Sometimes the t-shirt gets in the way, so rather always tap it. So you stack your foams one by one. Now I'm quite short in relation to my chair, so I know I must put the fourth one in, otherwise my legs cannot reach the backrest. So just persevere, continue depending on your body. You might need three, you might need four. And I want to support right underneath here my entire sacrum. Now I've got my hands, they can steer me here. Bring my chair a little bit closer, maybe a little bit further away. And from here I'm in a beautiful setu banda and I can relax. So this is a beautiful alternative for your shoulder stand, for your sarvangasana. And from here to come out of the pose, so you stay here as long as your body needs. 5 to 10 minutes. The way to come out is taking your foams out one by one. And in between, lengthen the spine and rest it down. And lengthen the spine and rest it down. And in the last one, you really lengthen legs over the, the, the seat. And you might even get somebody close by to put that blanket under your calves and your legs. And you stay here for as long as you need and put a weight on your abdomen if you feel like that, a thick book, a heavy book, anything that you've been using and bring yourself back to your breath. Now I hope that this helped you with your Salamba Sarvangasana setups. Uh, chair no chair, wall, a chair for the feet. Choose your alternatives and think out of the box if you are in lockdown and you've got to improvise with props. From me here in my little studio, my yoga space and admanas, I thank you all and enjoy your shoulder stands. Sarnamba Sarangasana. Namaste.